The dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities, some consider to be railroading. Yet, mastering them could grant you unlimited power! Sap Panyan's Darth Pan King here explaining how to use player psychology about the game rules to your advantage as a GM. Do you want to know why instant death traps are so scary? It is because players have been conditioned to believe that their hit points matter. They are led to believe that this is a game, and that the rules are there to protect their little lives. Oh, how wrong they are! But this is not a game. We are simulating a world and an immersive experience for our players. The time has come to reveal my darkest secrets to you. The first of many secret techniques you must master on your way to becoming a Sith GM is the technique of the smoke screen roll. When your players want to sneak through a dungeon, you ask them to roll stealth. But in truth, this roll is meaningless. There are no monsters nearby that could possibly notice them in this part of the dungeon. So even on a natural one, nothing bad would happen. Yet the players don't know this. If you did not ask for a role here, they would know that there is no threat. The players would have information that their characters don't. Why trust our players to separate those two when a simple smokescreen role can result in that much more immersion? But the exact opposite example applies as well. If an invisible foe has already spotted the party and is tailing them, no matter how good their party's stealth roll is, they can never go unnoticed now. But again, why tell them that? Ask for the roll anyways. Let them play their little game. Let them think they are safe behind the rules, when in reality they are not. They roll well on their stealth. Nothing bad could ever happen now, right? <laughs> Another version of the smokescreen roll is the, let's just call it the railroad roll. It is a role whose outcome is already predetermined by you, the GM. Because you need something to happen in your story, but you have to hide it behind a die roll to make your world seem larger. If you are a player, I highly suggest you leave this video now, for I will be telling you how the magic trick works, and you will never be able to unsee it. Your world is made from cardboard, and I am setting it on fire. Let's say the players need to know a piece of information, and a history role is about to reveal it to them. There used to be a curse that was placed on the royal family 400 years ago. But, if you just told them that information, it would feel unearned and boring. It would also make it completely obvious that it is important for them to know this. If there is a role, however, it creates uncertainty. Players expect to be able to roll, but you can manipulate the way you phrase the answer to give them the information you want them to have, irregardless of the outcome of the roll. If they roll high, then you tell them about an obscure theory of a curse that was placed on the royal family, yet hint that there must be more to the story 
but it was lost in the four hundred years since then. And if they roll low? You tell them that they know about a curse, but don't remember anything else about it. Both results have exactly the same outcome. But you let the players roll anyways. Let them feel safe and comfy and cozy about their progress in the game. And they will learn the details of the curse later on anyways. It is important after all. So it is not like you are promising them something you will not deliver on. But by letting them roll, you hide the fact that this is important information that you needed them to have. To give another example of how to use this technique in action, let's say a dark cult of some kind performs a ritual to summon an avatar of their evil god. And you, the DM, have a stat block ready for this avatar. And even if your players stop the ritual, something can still step out of the closing portal, though it is weaker than the actual avatar would have been. Except you, the DM, can simply use the same stat block anyways. As long as you do not tell them you did this, the players will get the satisfaction of both stopping the ritual and fighting your awesome god avatar. Win-win. But if they ever learn you do this, they might never trust you again. And if they decide to leave your game, well, it's treason then. But there are other ways to use player psychology against them. One of the biggest things a beginner DM needs to improve upon is their use of the initiative role. Combat is a mini-game, and the initiative role is the border. The point where we leave the fun and immersive world full of interesting characters and roleplay whimsy and enter a brutal fight to the death. Controlling this point is incredibly important. Because once initiative is rolled, the fun and whimsical characters your players have created slowly start to fade into the background. Your gnome ranger, Bumsickle MacPipples, is slowly replaced by a killing machine with 34 hit points, an armor class of 15, a plus 7 to hit with a longbow that deals 1d8 plus 3 damage, and he no longer has any moral quandaries about killing. The character vanishes and the build emerges. You make less choices in character and more choices that lead you to win the fight. Players have been conditioned that in combat the only thing that matters is their build and their damage per round. The numbers on their character sheet. And that is fine. But we, dark DMs, can use this to our advantage. Controlling the moment where you roll initiative is a vital ability for GMs to have. Let me give you an example of a GM that asks for a roll too early. As you enter deeper into the cave, you spot an ogre. It sees you also as you enter. Roll initiative. I've got a 22. Great, so you go first. Okay, um, has the ogre attacked us? Like, like... No, you go first, you want initiative. Yeah, but, like, if I run up and, like, stab it now, then won't I be the aggressor? What do you do? Uh, I, I don't know. Can I tell if it's hostile? You can make an insight check as an action. Action? No, I'm, I'm just gonna ready an attack then for if it attacks us. Okay, Joe, you're up next. Uh, I guess I also ready an attack? Okay, it's the ogre's turn now. Seeing as you both ready attacks, it will not walk near you and instead run up to Harry's character and attack him. So much for winning initiative, I guess. See what happened there. Don't ask for initiative when combat hasn't even started yet. The players in this scenario don't want to be Han Solo and shoot first. 
Han Solo is a jerk anyways. The GM needs to describe the ogre picking up its club and charging at the players with murderous intent. Then the initiative roll makes it clear what is about to happen. Now the players that win initiative represents them being quick enough to react to an incoming threat instead of feeling like heartless monsters that shoot first. Your players don't want to be heartless monsters. That's the DM's job after all. But if this has ever happened to you as a DM, do not worry. Your players were taking your game seriously. They refused to be murder hobos who just attacked everything even though initiative was rolled. So you were doing something right. But try to avoid this mistake in the future anyways. But there is an even more advanced technique for DMs of the dark side. And that is to deny your players their precious initiative role. Because players are used to combat. The initiative role is a safe space for them. Initiative begins the part that they are good at. Where their hit points and AC and spell slots protect them from any and all danger. So when you introduce your BBG and the players try to attack him, let them make an attack. Even roll damage if they hit. But then deny them the initiative roll. They will be stunned, uncertain what to do because you have just removed their precious safe space of murder from them. The minigame has not started yet. And they will be hesitant to continue being the aggressor with their oh-so-precious initiative being denied. And now you know at least some of the ways in which you can trick your players. I know you will use all of them. <laughs> oh, God. This voice is killing me. End of villain arc. Villain arc is over. Sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna take this villainous version of me and I'm gonna seal him in this gemstone. Sure that'll never come up again. Oh, oh I'm 